Imagine, just imagine for a moment you're in the hospital waiting room, waiting for a loved one to give birth. It could be your sister, your mother, or your daughter. It's a joyous moment, the expectation for the next generation. But all of a sudden, the lights start flickering. Machines start beeping. Doctors and nurses are running around in a frenzy. There is no news. So you're pondering, panicking, and pacing, thinking about what could be going on. Eventually, a doctor emerges from the madness with a sullen face and announces, I'm sorry, we lost the baby. With emotions raging, you hold back tears and compose yourself for your family and ask, what happened? The doctor says, we just experienced a cyber attack. The machines went offline and there were complications. Now stop imagining, because in 2019, Mrs. Tehrani Kidd walked into a hospital in Alabama in the United States, expecting her bundle of joy. What she didn't know was that the hospital was in the middle of a cyber attack, ransomware. Ransomware is the kind of attack where criminals come in and take your data and hold it for a ransom. For eight days, the hospital machines were offline, patient records were inaccessible, and the critical machines that they use to monitor the heartbeat of newborn babies were offline. So when Mrs. Kidd's daughter was born with an umbilical cord wrapped around her neck, the machines that would usually notify the nurses and doctors about this condition were offline. As a result, the baby suffered severe brain damage and died shortly thereafter. You see, when business leaders think of cyber attacks and cybersecurity, they think of securing their networks and their business, the computers, the data, and the hard drives. What they often overlook are the social and economic impact of these cyber attacks. While the hospital can do what it can to bring their machines back to life, the same can't be said for Mrs. Kidd's daughter. These cyber attacks are a threat in this new digital world. We, one would argue that the purpose of a hospital is to preserve life. But in this case, the hospital did not achieve its purpose. The purpose of a business is something that has been in question for a long time. As a matter of fact, in 2019, 181 business leaders got together to rethink the purpose of a business. Because for many years, it was the thinking of the economist Milton Friedman that was prevalent and dominant in business. His thinking was that the social responsibility of a business is to maximize profits for its shareholders. But we've all seen in recent years what happens when we chase profits. A good example is in 1968, when Japanese compact cars were taking the United States by storm, the executives at Ford Motor Company decided they too wanted to launch a compact car and participate in this action. Over years, they developed and designed a new compact car, the Ford Pinto. But during testing, they found out there was a fatal flaw in the design of the car. Whenever it got hit from the back during an accident, 
the fuel tank would rapture and the car would literally explode into flames, endangering the passengers. What did the executives do after this? They did a cost-benefit analysis. They looked at what is the cost of redesigning the car? What is the cost of making it safer versus delaying the launch and missing out on the profits? Their conclusion, it was cheaper to let them burn. So when executives got together in 2019 to rethink the purpose of a business, it was because of events like these that have been going on over decades. And at the end of that business roundtable discussion, they all declared that the purpose of a business from now on and going forward should be about creating value for its stakeholders, not just the shareholders, but creating value for its customers, creating value for its suppliers, its employees, the environment, and the communities from which this business operates. Sustainability. As the world becomes more digital, sustainability has also come to the forefront. But does that mean that companies that focus on sustainability don't make profits? No. According to a Harvard Business Review report, companies that focus on a higher purpose achieve above 7% returns in the market. On top of that, they are more profitable and they grow faster. So there is a case for sustainability. But now the question is, as businesses achieve or pursue this sustainability, what stands in their way? In this day and age, there's a key metric on how to measure how businesses create value for stakeholders, how businesses manage and achieve their sustainability goals, and that is ESG. ESG has emerged as a means for society to measure and assess how companies and businesses are doing in terms of achieving their sustainability goals and how they're doing in terms of creating value for all stakeholders, not just the primary shareholders. Some of you might be asking, what exactly is ESG? ESG, E, is looking at the environment. How does this business impact the environment it operates in terms of using natural resources, carbon emissions, pollution, waste, and how energy efficient the business is. S is looking at the social side. How does this business manage its internal and external relationships? We're talking here about its customers, its employees, and diversity within its workforce. And then G, G stands for governance. How is this business applying principles and rules around corporate ethics, board independence, and board diversity. As I've mentioned, over the years, ESG has grown as a toolkit to measure the sustainability of firms. Sustainability is the outcome, ESG is the measurement. But today, I argue that while sustainability has become the purpose of many firms, while creating stakeholder value has been the, the key driver for many firms, one thing remains outstanding, one thing stands in the way, and that is cyber attacks. Cyber attacks can stand in the way of businesses achieving their purpose, achieving that value creation for its stakeholders. If we look at ESG and how digital security affects each one of those pillars. In the environment, if a nuclear power plant or a water plant gets attacked, that could lead to some dire consequences for the environment. 
A good example is in 2021, in Miami, in the United States, a water treatment plant was attacked by criminals. Once they got in, they decided to increase the levels of sodium hydroxide in the water. Now, sodium hydroxide at high concentration is toxic and corrosive, not just to human beings, but the environment. Fortunately, in this case, they managed to catch that data breach and reverse the damage the criminals wanted to implement. From a social point of view, need I remind you of Mrs. Kidd? From a governance perspective, all across the world, new laws are coming into play, laws around data privacy and security. In the UK and Europe, you've got the General Data Protection Regulation. In America, there are many more, such as the California Consumer Protection Act. Even in South Africa, you've got the Protection of Personal Information Act. All of these factors contribute to ESG and digital cyber attacks can stand in the way of you achieving your sustainability goals. My argument today is that we stop thinking of E, S, and G, but we start thinking of E, S, G, D. Think about it this way. By show of hands, who here loves coffee in the morning? A lot of hands have gone up. I also like having a cup of coffee in the morning. I go to my barista, I get a cappuccino. Every once in a while he asks, would you like to sprinkle some chocolate on there? I think about it, you know, calories. It makes the coffee taste a little bit better. And it's really good for my Instagram to show the world that I'm working hard. But beyond that, the chocolate sprinkles don't do much. That's not what you're there for. The main ingredients are the water, the milk, and the coffee. Today, business leaders treat digital security like the chocolate sprinkles when they think of sustainability. It's something that you sprinkle on top to look good and feel good. But that is no longer enough. My argument is that digital security should be a main component of ESG. I'll give you three reasons why we should do that. Number one, visibility. At this point in time, I mentioned that you know, they sprinkle here, there. Sometimes they don't. And it's up to you to read the reports to see how they treat digital security. By having ESGD, it puts digital security at the forefront and not an afterthought. It makes sure that boards and CEOs think about digital security when they're creating their sustainability strategies. Number two, with visibility comes transparency. As I mentioned, it's sprinkled within ESG. We're not sure what they're doing, but with visibility, we get the transparency that allows the public, that allows investors, that allows academics to properly analyze what this business is doing from a digital security point of view. And when you have visibility and transparency, the next stage is collaboration. Now that we know what's going on, it's easier for all the agencies to collaborate and coordinate in order to tackle these challenges. Cybersecurity is not a one-man job. It's not the responsibility of one business, but it's the responsibility of the entire society at large. So through collaboration, we can better prepare ourselves. We can better build things that can withstand cyber attacks. So those will be the benefits of having the D as a pillar within ESG. Visibility, transparency, 
and collaboration. My argument is that it's no longer the time to sprinkle digital security within your sustainability goals. Digital security is not just an add-on. We need to think of it as the cup that holds these components together. Without digital security, we cannot enjoy our sustainability goals. In conclusion, I'd like to say that I do believe that the purpose of a company, the purpose of a business, should be creating value for all of its stakeholders, not just chasing profits. The purpose of a business should be achieving sustainability goals. Achieving those goals is the key to unlocking a lasting legacy for our children and our children's children. But in that same breath, how dare we speak of sustainability? How dare we speak of legacy without considering the most pressing need of the 21st century, and that is securing our digital future? The social and economic impacts of digital security and cyber attacks are real. Let's not forget Mrs. Kidd's daughter. Now is not the time to think of sprinkling a little bit of security on top. When we think of sustainability, we need to think of digital security. It is the cup that allows us to enjoy these benefits. Thank you.